Welcome to Mastering CS Candid Leader Insights, the podcast where we dive deep into the world of customer success with industry leaders. I'm your host, Irina Cismash, and today's guest is Eli Yates, Head of Customer Success at Signable. Eli, welcome, and thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Hi, thanks for having me. I usually like to start by getting to know the person behind the role. So I want to ask you, how did you end up working in customer success? I worked in retail throughout my early teens and 20s. So I've always gained enjoyment from interacting with customers. My first B2B role was as an account manager for Hiring Hub, which is an online recruitment marketplace. I discovered how much I enjoyed building rapport and relationships with customers in a much less fleeting way than I suppose the retail space allows for. So I continue to build on this and progress through to senior relationship management and and onward, really. So it all started out sort of understanding that I loved interacting with customers and making sure they were getting the most out of things. Tell us more about your role at Signable. What are your main responsibilities as uh, head of customer success? Yeah, of course. So I currently oversee both a success and support division here at Signable. There's a total of 10 people under my care. So I'm part of a strategy team made up of other heads of department as well. And we sort of, as well as managing the the teams, directly supporting two managers and their development and overseeing strategic and procedural direction of the customer facing team. I am involved in the planning and execution of company-wide objectives and sort of overall strategic direction of the company by way of being part of this strategy team. It's my job to ensure that the bigger picture goals are fed down to my team and our initiatives and our objectives line up with the company vision as well. I want to discuss about your team. You mentioned a few things about it when you described your role and responsibilities, but I want to go deeper. How do you structure it? You mentioned also sales and you mentioned the support and also customer success. How did you split the role and responsibilities to ensure maximum efficiency and impact? So yeah, you mentioned support there. And the one thing that sets Signable apart from other e-signature platforms is our real UK-based support team, your real human UK-based support mm-hmm. team, I should say. I think it's necessary to include support in the overarching function of customer success, but also have a dedicated team to ensure our customers have confidence in how they're using our software. This also enables our success division to focus purely on building relationships, understanding seasonality, anticipating requirements and ensuring our customers are truly looked after. We have senior CS managers overseeing partners and bespoke accounts, meaning the consultative approach to relationship management is being used for the higher volume users. And the smaller transactional accounts are also given enough CS love as well. So it's kind of about splitting the success team into divisions itself, but also having that support function to to really prop everything up. You mentioned the division and the different roles in the CS team. Did you structure it based on the life cycle of the customers? Do you have roles in the onboarding? You separate the implementation phase or the onboarding versus the renewal and other stages? Or is it the one senior people who is overseeing the whole journey? No, it is split. So we split the customer success team into sort of managing the higher volume accounts. So obviously Signable works, but it's an e-signature platform. So our customers send documents for signature in what we call envelopes. So the higher the volume of envelopes, obviously the more that customer is using Signable and therefore the more people that might be using Signable across their entire organization. So they require a little bit more of a consultative, I guess, heavier touch relationship management kind of account manager, if if you like. So we have people looking after bespoke and partners who require that really. And then we have our success team that look after the smaller accounts as well. So they can understand slightly different life cycles there in terms of upgrading for seasonality, downgrading, you know, adding more people to the team and expanding that team and and, and utilizing those features. So it's it's split basically based on the size of each account rather than industry at the moment. Okay. And you also mentioned the fact that you are part of the senior management team. I want to ask you, who are your partners in driving the growth of the company? Well, yeah, that would be representatives from all the other teams as well. So we have product, we have finance, we have marketing, we have HR and operations. All of these heads come together really to discuss how we would come up with our objectives and our goals and our initiatives and how to get there, as well as essentially discussing through forums and retros how we would undertake challenges and really 
push through to make sure that we are creating a vision for the company and delivering the objectives and initiatives to achieve that vision. I want to know what's the relationship with sales and how do you make sure that sales is in sync with the customer success department? How's the internal handover? Where how do you make sure that you are working and you have a great relationship between the two? Yeah, that's a great question, actually. And obviously, we work really closely with the sales division because we have to have that handover. And it's an ever-evolving process, I think, the handover. And it is It sometimes needs to be nuanced because, for example, if there's a more consultative 360 degree sales cycle for a partner that goes on quite a long time, you might want to involve the customer success team at an earlier point within that journey. So we kind of have to treat it on a case by case basis, but at the same time, have consistency for, you know, the plan levels, the size of the customer and who's going to be looking after those. So I would say probably one of the key things for that is diligence, administrative diligence, a CRM diligence, certainly, because we need our sales team to recognize at what point a customer needs to be handed over and introduced to their kind of relationship manager, their customer success manager. And we need to ensure that that is done as smoothly as possible so that the customer really feels that their journey from being onboarded to being actually looked after by the customer success team is really seamless and they feel total trust in the people that they are corresponding with throughout all of this as well. So it is an ongoing process. And I think that the key thing is diligence and communication and having a single source of truth as well for the people that sign up and what correspondence has happened between the sales team and that particular customer or prospect as well. I know that your career journey is quite diverse and you also have experience in sales, operations, product management. Do you think that the relationship you have now with sales benefits because of the experience that you have from other departments? Or in other words, how did that particular experience in different teams help you approach the CS function? And how did it help you leverage the relationship that you have with other departments? That's a great question. It's a good observation as well. I I would say certainly, you know, having worked in commercial and internal roles, you know, gives you a real good sense. But I'd, I'd say the number one thing that all of these roles have in common is that you have to act as a true advocate for the customer. So starting an account management means you learn how to put the customer at the center of everything that you do. And if you take this then into operations so that all the tools and processes have the customer as the central focus, then you're really looking at customer success with the most wide angle lens possible. So likewise, I guess in terms of product management, you're acting as the facilitator for the customer and translating to product teams, the behaviors and needs of the customer base to ensure continued success of the product. I think coming from a customer facing role and entering the more product related or internal position gives you the unique perspective of being hardwired to consider the customer first through direct experience of handling their queries on a daily basis. So I do sort of feel that starting out cutting your teeth, so to speak, by putting the customer at the center of everything means that you do that throughout the organization. And that really pivots everyone's thought processes to that customer and and makes you build a, a more successful product. I want to ask you about roles, responsibilities, and also skills, because I know that uh, CS role is a versatile one. From your experience, which are the most important skills that a CSM need to have in order to be successful? Okay, that's, that's a great question, actually. I would say it's kind of more of an attribute than a skill, but curiosity is really important when it comes to success, I think. Wanting to understand why customers use our software, what problems it actually solves for them, what they actually require e-signatures for. All of this goes beyond the regular know your client stuff and helps to build that consultative relationship. That's so important. I would say, of course, like presentation skills, sales skills, tech skills, CRM administration skills are all critical too. But curiosity is kind of inherent and it's much harder to teach. I don't know if it can be taught, to be honest with you. But I I just think really asking the questions, digging deeper and sort of building the relationship with the customer through actually understanding what they want and why. It, it requires curiosity. So I would put that at the top of the list. How do you test it out in your interview process? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's a, that's a great question as well. I think our interview process would start with, you know, quite informal questions, kind of asking people exactly what it is that 
made them apply for the role at Signable? And that obviously sounds like quite a basic everyday question that you would put in an interview process. But what we're looking for in those responses is for people to say, you know, I love the culture. It seems like you're doing things quite differently. Like you have a support function, which I've never seen before. I've looked into your culture page and I understand about your well-being allowance and your unlimited holiday. And I think this is brilliant. And I'd love to know what that's like. You know, I think you can get a sense of curiosity from individuals by asking them to divulge, if you like, what's brought them to you, what's brought them in front of you, because that enables them to tell a story. And I think being able to tell a story and, and have a narrative is, is also an important part of customer relationship management, really. I know that we are talking about asking the right questions in order to find the why behind any answer that a customer gives you. But I find this quite challenging. You can ask questions, but how can you dig deeper? I want to ask you, what are your questions? Or how do you phrase them? How do you frame them in order to find what's definitely important? Because in some cases... Maybe neither does the customer know the right answer. So mm-hmm. how do you discover the gold? I would say keep the question simple for customers. One of the questions, the most basic questions we, we'll use is, what are you looking to use signable for? And so obviously that will start them off to say, well, we've got you know an enrollment form that we use for our students that they need to sign. And if you say, okay, so how are you currently getting that form signed? What problem does this solve for you? And they say, well, We actually have to do it in the office and then we have to pop it in a filing cabinet and then we've got to keep it safe. And it's really difficult to then go and locate it. I think once you ask questions that bring forth their challenges and their problems, it's much easier to to tailor an understanding of, of what it is that they need and present that to them. So yes, they might have issues filing away their documents. Therefore, they might need to use webhooks to to bring the signable documents out of signable and pop them into their own CRM. They might need to use our API to integrate it directly so that they never have to leave their system and start using ours. It's about, I guess, digging into challenges. So I guess one of the questions is, what's the hardest thing about your job and what you do? People aren't really necessarily expecting to hear that on a sales call, on an account management call, on an onboarding call, for example. They're willing to divulge more if you ask questions that really make them think. There are so many demands on the customer success team. And we talked about the right questions to find out the answers and to understand the internal motivation. I want to ask you, how do you make sure that your team is working on the right KPIs and consistently drives meaningful impact? Because it's easy for the CS team to be, I would say, buried in a lot of tasks. There's also an overlap between support and CS. And because the CS team is the one who interacts with customers, a lot of things can fall on the plate of the customer success team. But in the end, they need to have a clear direction and they need to have a clear focus. How do you as leader of the CS team make sure that they are impacting the right KPIs and they are working towards them rather than keep themselves busy? Absolutely. Yeah. Smart work is really important rather than busy work. I think you kind of touched on it there. I think it comes down to having the right structure of the team and having the right people doing the right things. So the dedicated support team dealing with technical and help queries leaves the success team to, free to focus on getting to know the high volume customers and understand their needs as well. But mm-hmm. another thing I would say is that data and tools are key as well. So being to understand trends in usage across seasons and identify customers on the wrong plans, for example, enables us to proactively ensure customers get the most out of using Signable. So by far, the most important tool we use is Slack. So we have an integration set up to alert a Slack channel if a customer leaves a, a low NPS score, for example, or if they request a feature. This allows us to respond to customers in real time to educate them on the capabilities of the software and prevent unnecessary churn due to missing or understanding the features. So when it comes to things like, you know, retention KPIs, Mm -hmm. it's to anticipate where the customers are struggling and come up with solutions to their problems before they necessarily know that it is a problem or when they're indicating it early on, it doesn't then turn into a churn. Using the right tools and the data to inform us of that is really, really important because it allows us, as you've touched on already, to work smartly rather than just be busy and sort of going through a list of customers and looking at what they're up to. We can anticipate and get alerts to it directly through, you know, integrations with Slack as well. So yeah, tools 
and data for sure. What other tools are part of your technology stack as the CS? What other tools do you rely on besides Slack for alert and notifications? Yeah, so CRM and marketing tool is HubSpot. So that is really crucial for us. You know, we need, we need to send out comms, but of course it records all of our correspondence with our customers as well. So we know what's going on. Retool is what we use for data, which okay. plugs into our you know, data warehouse and enables us to segment by industry and season and you know create portfolios for customers as well, of customers, I should say, for the CS team as well. Help Scout we use for support and chat. So we are able to communicate with customers through that. And that's integrated again with HubSpot. So it's all in one place. Slack is obviously the most important tool for us because it's internal and external communication. And I think being able to have visibility of a, a customer issue across the entire organization through integrations with like Help Scout on Slack, you can then, I guess, employ the hive mind of everybody in the organization to jump on an issue that it might be a bit complex and requires several points of view to come up with the right answer for the customer. So yeah, there's quite a few different tools we use. I mean, this isn't mentioning all mm-hmm. of them. We have um, an affiliate program that we run with the first promoter. And of course, myriad ones in the infrastructure department, of the product team, which I couldn't even begin to name. You mentioned KPIs as uh, retention. What retention and I assume churn is one of the things that your team is measured. But besides those, what other elements are you for making sure that you are on track with? So certainly expansions and upgrades, you know, and uh, annual upgrades as well. So moving people from monthly plans to annual plans that are a much better value as well for, for stickiness. Lifetime value of customer as well, you know, LTV is important. But with churn, we do break it down as well into actual customer churn, but also delinquent churn where payment failures come into play. And then we can tighten up processes around the, the automation of renewal emails and things like that. So yeah, nothing too out of the ordinary, but yeah, the standard the standard KPIs, I think. And how do you make sure that data hygiene is in place? You mentioned that it's important to have a unique source of information. Is there a data guardian in Signable? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we have a data team, in fact. Yeah, we have a data team. So if we require a certain dashboard to be built, that could enable, let's say, our customer success team to view all of their portfolios of customers, or perhaps they want to view particular customers that are using a higher allocation of their plan than they should be for that time of the month or year, then we would be able to contact those customers ahead of them realizing that they're going to run out of envelopes and say to them, look, the way that you're going at the moment, you're going to run out of envelopes soon. Is it a good idea to consider moving you to another plan? What kind of seasonality we're looking at we're looking at a high volume of envelopes being sent throughout the year or a certain time of year so yeah we have a whole data team who and we have a process by which we can raise a data request and then consult on that and move it through the process to having a dashboard built where we can then go and and, and pull that data and drive growth what would you say that there are your biggest challenges in this moment from your role what keeps you up at night Uh, That's a a great one. At the moment, I would say what I'm seeing across the board and and speaking with my team is price sensitivity. We're seeing customers constantly shopping around to find the best deal that they can. And sometimes at the sacrifice of, of some of their needs, to be honest with you. However, as signable is not only incredible value for money with a pay as you go option, We also don't tie people into contracts, so they're able to upgrade and downgrade to suit their own seasonality. So flexibility is key here. And and, and I think that is an answer to that challenge in a way, is is making sure that you're flexible. But also, and I've touched on it a few times here, but one of the biggest challenges is harnessing the right data and, and delving into data from several sources and creating a narrative of industry trends and customer behavior that really can inform a strategy and and growth objectives and goals. So yeah, I would certainly say harnessing the data, you know, getting it from all of the right places and trying to amalgamate it in one dashboard, which we're well on our way with, but it is a constant challenge because the more data you get, the more you need in a way, the deeper you need to delve. So yeah, I think about data a lot. (laughs) Do you think having the right data helped you sell the CS story internally? Hmm. How do you how do you make sure that the senior management team understands the true value of the CS department? How do you promote your 
team's efforts internally? Well, yeah, I, I definitely think data is, is helpful in sort of illustrating that because it's, you know, it's cold, hard facts and everybody can understand that rather than anecdotes. But I guess at Signable, we, we put the, the customer at the center of everything we do. And it's our job in success to advocate for the customer across the entire organization. So one of the things that helps us is understanding customer behavior and our tonality when it comes to speaking with customers. So one of the things we've done is we have added shadowing our support team to the onboarding schedule for every single person who joins the business. So it doesn't matter if they're in operations, people, finance, product, marketing, they will come and shadow the CS team for a few hours as part of their onboarding. So they understand how we interact with customers. And we also, we invite all of the teams across the, the organization to uh, get involved in customer success immersion days as well, where we invite everyone to, to come and, and shadow the entire customer facing team, so support and success for a few hours in the day to see how we articulate the products and interact with customers. And as I mentioned before, we have a senior strategy team with representatives from all departments. As part of that strategy team, I share the goals and challenges of the success team on a weekly basis. And we ensure that we celebrate success as well in bi-weekly wrap-ups led by our MD and you know retros and forums and all that sort of thing. I think Celebrating the success of things that our customer team have done with visibility across the whole organization is really important. So yeah, a few things, shadowing, celebrating success and advocating to the customer internally. Before we wrap up, I want to know who has been your most influential mentor in your career and what's the best piece of advice they gave you? Oh, yeah. Well, there's a lot to name. My CEO, Ollie, is a real mentor for me. He sees things quite Clearly, I'm a bit nebulous and ambiguous with things at times, but he seems to see things very clearly. He built the software and he kind of sees simple pathways to things. So he's, he's certainly a mentor of mine, but also my first boss at hiring her where I started out, Sarah Jones, she taught me tenacity and persistence, regularly using the phrase, get on the phone. Uh, <laughs> um, but she also, one of the pieces of advice she, she gave me is when speaking to customers, don't fill the silence when talking with customers. And silence is important. So let that silence be. It can encourage the customer to open up and fill that silence with truths that they might not if you were kind of babbling on or asking them very specific questions. And this enables you to build relationships built on trust. So, yeah, I'd say piece of advice. Silence is important. So that's one thing that you've learned and you remember from your mentors. Besides mm-hmm. that, what else would you advise CSM who are in the beginning of the career? What else would you advise them to do in order yeah. to keep up with all the changes, with not necessarily inconsistency, but the uncertainty that exists in this moment in the CS industry? Well, yeah, I would say, yeah, you're right. There is obviously, you know, it's a, it's a burgeoning industry in many ways. Mm-hmm. Of course, it depends on customers and we talked about price sensitivity, but I would hark back, not to, you know, rake over what I've already said, but I would hark back to remain curious, always be curious. Yes, there are going to be tasks that you have to do throughout the day. There's going to be repetitive things, uh, you know, admin not, might not be your strong point. But as long as you remain curious when you're actually having conversations and discussing things with your customer and you're taking an interest in them as a person, you know, as an organization and then whoever you're looking after as an individual and sort of, I guess, understanding what challenges they face, what their company actually does, a genuine interest in that will keep your days really interesting and will make people want to talk to you. And that, <laughs> that's really important, I think, you know, to be a good customer success manager, a good relationship manager. It's about people being excited to to hear from you or having confidence in you when they have a, an issue to raise um, and being able to talk quite frankly and open with you about something that might be a problem or a challenge based on your working relationship. Curiosity helps with all of that. So my piece of advice would certainly be to be or stay curious. Thank you so much, Eli, for sharing your valuable insights with us. And the big thank you to everyone who is listening to this episode. We hope you found the conversation as insightful and inspiring as I did. And until next time, stay safe and keep mastering customer success. Thank you.